This week on the agenda, as Germany's Olaf Scholz ends his second visit to China as Chancellor, we examine just how relations really stand between Beijing and Berlin. Cooperation between Berlin and Beijing is an opportunity, not a risk. That was the message from President Xi Jinping to Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz on his second visit to China. Scholz added Germany was committed to free trade without confrontation, while Xi warned against rising protectionism. So how might the relationship between the two countries develop following this visit? Joining me now are Dr. Ulrich Bruckner, Jean Monnet Professor for European Studies at Stanford University in Berlin, Stefan Dardelen, a member of the German Bundestag um, in Berlin, and Wang Hui Yao, founder and president of the Center for China and Globalization. Thanks all of you um, for, for coming on this edition of the agenda. Um, now, um, Dr. Ulrich, I'll start with you, because Chancellor Schultz, he had a had to walk quite a fine line here, didn't he, on this trip, promoting German business interests, but also delivering warnings from Europe about trade and about geopolitical tensions. Do, do you think he succeeded? Well, he definitely walked the thin line. And on the one hand, it's clear that the second and the third largest economy in the world could do a lot not only to boost the global economy, which is not doing so well, but both countries are very much dependent on it, economically speaking. And at the same time, we see that Russia's invasion in Ukraine causes major global problems that China could fix if it would use its weight to stop the war. That would be the biggest economic boost. And I think this was a strong message that Scholz tried to get across. Well. Wang Huiyang, would you agree with, with that assessment from China's side? Well, I think that uh, the Chancellor Ola Xiao actually made a very significant visit to, to China this time within a year and a half. He brought a, 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 a large, a significant, uh, high level business delegation. Uh, but also, we see uh, so many other German uh, parties participate in, uh, around his visit, like just for my think tank, Center for China Globalization. We hosted a delegation from SPD, uh, CDU, uh, also Munich Security Conference, and also Cobra Foundation, just to name a few. But I think that the, the, the achievement of this, uh, this uh, timely visit is, is multi, multifaceted. You know, first of all, they, they emphasize the, the second and third largest economy has to work together for the global uh, uh, benefit. But also, uh, they have reached some consensus in terms of uh, uh, on, on the Russian war in Ukraine, but also on the, on the Gaza uh, 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 crisis. So, so uh, of course, Chinese side has reiterated that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, we, we should continue to pursue uh, uh, peace. There's no nuclear should be fought. And, and also we need to have a peace, uh, peace talks uh, as, 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 uh, as soon as we can. And uh, China is willing to be part of this process. So, 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 uh, and also we have to a bit by the UN uh, Security Council resolution on Gaza and things like that. But on top of this, I think this is very significant because uh, Ola Schultz had a three days intensive visit and he's visited industry, universities, high level meeting with President Xi and the Premier League, and also talked in the business roundtables. So I think I uh, achieved, uh, 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 you know, a great uh, uh, progress in terms of uh, uh, Sino-EU and Sino, particularly German relations. It's a good example how uh, the economy uh, of the significant of the world has to work together. They, they are working together. And Seven, I, I wonder, let, let's focus a little bit on what President Xi said about that cooperation between Beijing and Berlin um, being an opportunity, um, not a risk, but an opportunity. Where do you think that those opportunities really um, came to the fore on this trip? Uh, and I wonder if those were, were things that that you might have seen on your recent trip to China? Well, <clears throat> uh, we, we have to see in the future in uh, what, uh, in, in, in where are the opportunities uh, following this visit. Uh, what we do need is a turnaround in Germany's China policy, I do believe, because Chancellor Scholz must also make it clear through action that all the talk about the beginning of a decoupling or the beginning of de-risking from China in terms of trade relations is extremely damaging. 
uh, increasingly close uh, trade links are also an important contribution to peace. Um, and this must not be put at risk carelessly. And what I learned um, during my visit uh, to China is that the best way to improve um, German-Chinese relations would be for Germany to adopt a more independent foreign and security policy towards the United States of America. So more sovereign uh, and independent foreign and security policy. Otherwise, Germany is rightly not perceived as an independent player in China. And the question always uh, arises as to whether it would be not better to talk to Washington uh, immediately instead of Berlin or instead of Brussels even. So as a result, many potential and areas of economic uh, cooperation are currently not being used at the moment because of the inner German debate also. Uh, and this urgently, urgently need to be changed for the, for the, for the benefit of both sides. Um, and, and Ulrich, I'd like to bring you in again, because like, you know, there was almost inevitably um, talk about um, de-risking once again. So where are we actually seeing that? Or, or is it just rhetoric? Well, first of all, we have to distinguish when we look at the mutual dependencies. There is a form of wishful thinking in Germany for a long time that we can rely on Russia to import cheap gas and this will last forever until it doesn't. There's a similar belief that we can count on the United States to provide cheap security and that lasts forever until it doesn't. And there is an equal dependency with China that is so huge that there is no thought about decoupling because we both can simply not afford this. So that was no longer a topic. We are mutually so dependent on each other that we would harm each other economically massively if that would even be a thought. So de-risking means that Germany doesn't put all the eggs in one basket and rather reaches out to other growing economies in Asia to diversify its portfolio, which certainly doesn't apply to the country, uh, the companies that accompanied Olaf Scholz. So the big companies like BASF, the chemical giant, and the big car manufacturers are so massively invested in China that for them, de-risking means that they should invest more to benefit from the economic potential there. So there is a conversation about de-risking, but Olaf Scholz, for some surprisingly, made clear that in his understanding, we should rather highlight the partnership, which is a statement sent to the United States that Germany is not the poodle of the U.S. and follows no matter what. But again, China increases the dependency of Germany if the war in Ukraine continues. And if they want Germany to be a partner, then de-risking would mean that we settle this conflict no, more sooner than later. Stefan, I can see you nodding along there. And um, this talk of, of partnership um, between Germany and China being um, ever more important. Chancellor Scholz emphasised um, that importance of fair competition, um, didn't he, during the visit? And I wonder how you interpret that stance, uh, particularly because the, the, the two are very important economic partners for each other. Well, first of all, I just have to add something uh, Mr. Bruckner said. Well, we do have a um, coalition in Germany uh, and we do have a um, coalition in Berlin which is sending completely uh, contradictional uh, mixed signals. And that's why Chancellor Scholz's visit was certainly the most difficult for him uh, this time. And um, I do believe that Scholz uh, realized one thing that, first of all, the German industry, which is shrinking because of the uh, dumb uh, Western sanctions against Russia. Uh, you remember the German foreign minister wanted to ruin Russia with these economic sanctions against Russia. But what we are facing is we are ruining our own industry. Our industry is shrinking last year, and this year is almost the same. Um, and uh, the Russian industry is rising. And one of the major uh, reasons is that we do not have the cheap energy anymore. We are spending more money for a very 
uh, expensive LNG fracking gas uh, from the United States. So we have, on the one hand, we have this damage of the German industry and the industrial complex. And the other hand is uh, we have more and more voices for decoupling, de-risking, confrontation against China. And uh, we can see, because the investment was rising from Germany to China last year, um, even though we have this debate, political debate here, that means the German industry is facing uh, such a big challenge that they decided to fight rather than to fly to the flight, flight from, uh, from, uh, from China. So they're going to fight yeah. for their investment in China because they know they, uh, they lost the, big, uh, the, the cheap energy. One of the major, how you can and say the major reasons for the economy, for the prosperity mm. in Germany. And then they are going to lose the market, the investment in China, and that's the end of German industry and German industrialization as well. And I think in regarding uh, the, the fact that uh, Scholz was uh, having so many uh, major uh, management uh, managers uh, from uh, VW, from BISF, from Mercedes, from BMW, and so on. They were all with him in this uh, in this uh, trip to China. Mm -hmm. I think he uh, wanted to uh, send them the signal that they can count on him to back them for the investment in China. And, and yeah. therefore, I think it was a it was a good uh, good trip, good visit uh, for the future relationships. Uh, but the, the 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 question is still, could he? Uh, stand this position? Can he stand this position in this coalition? So German companies want to invest more in China. And of course, Chinese companies want to invest more in Europe and in Germany in particular. Wang Huiyao, um, President Xi warned against rising protectionism. And there are certainly trade tensions in sectors like EVs, solar energy, um, just to name two. Um, what do you think this visit has done to ease those tensions? Absolutely. I mean, you see all the German uh, industry junk uh, uh, followed uh, Ola Schultz. And actually, they realized, you know, being China and Germany are two largest manufacturing countries in the world. They are strong in uh, industrialization and they, they are strong in manufacturing. And they're the leaders of, of, of those areas. And also the EV cars. Uh, we have all those German uh, uh, automakers in China, and they are also going to make EV cars too. And uh, I mean, Tesla already made half of its EV car in China. So China has already become a state of the art and also the, the R&D center and also the, the test market and also the most competitive market of EV cars. So if a German company wants to, uh, you know, expand to the world and, if, you know, they have to uh, conquer the China market first and then before they go global. So that's already shifted the, the, the EV car center now to China. So it's to the Germans' advantage, even to its survival of its automakers, to be in China. And uh, so that's really beneficial, and uh, that's really good for both sides. And same is true for, for Chinese companies in the Germany. I mean, like Huawei is in, in Germany making some uh, 5G networks. It's, it's, so German 5G networks is much better than uh, UK and other countries who... Who, who, who really stopped the Huawei uh, operation. So, so it's really good. I think it's good for both sides and uh, uh, that we have to revitalize this industrial linkage, and which is also good for the, for the peace and benefit of, of, the, of the world and also to really uh, lead the world in this innovation process. And of course, there's much more than that. There's a climate change, there's mm. a environment cooperation, there's uh, also uh, trade and, uh, and tourism, student exchanges, investment. You know, we have to really have keep the normal trade, particularly when Europe and Germany facing uh, uh, existential threats and, and the uh, Russian-Ukraine war, and also the spread of, of, the, of the Middle East. And also, again, China and Germany and EU to that extent, we have to work together uh, to stop this, uh, uh, you know, uh, spill over of the Iranian Israel fight. I'm in Germany now attending a conference uh, in Berlin at, uh, at the Berger of, uh, Foundation on, on making peace and mediation. It's important. I mean, the consensus there, China and the EU and Germany should work together uh, in maintain the peace uh, for the Middle East and, uh, uh, and also Europe. So if you, EU can, uh, Germany can help mediate China-U.S. relation, China certainly will do all its best to help uh, Germany and EU to mediate the, the EU-German-Russian uh, 
uh, this conflict. Uh, absolutely, we, we, we need each other. We can cooperate with each other. Well, keeping the focus on, on trade, investment, and on business ties, Ulrich, I, I wonder you know, where, where you see this balance or the difference between uh, fairness and protectionism. Well, what we notice from the German point of view, what is happening in China is that with the rising problems in the real estate sector, a lot of money was redirected to industry and produced a massive overproduction in important fields for climate change, such as solar panels and wind turbines, but also electric vehicles. And this overproduction is on the one hand beneficial because it produces very cheap products that can help us to manage our transformation. But at the same time, these are crucial industries for the German economic basis. And that means if we just allow whatever is overproduced and comes with dumping prices on the European market would ruin the local economy in these specific and what is considered to be strategic industries. So we have to be careful and not just look at, oh, there are opportunities, and then we look with a blind eye on the long-term consequences, because we had already an infant industry problem with solar panels in the 2000s, and China simply ruined these economies in the east of Germany, and we can easily do the same again. So on the one hand, we need cheap products, and on the other hand, we learned our lesson the hard way from the war of Russia in Ukraine, that if we create, create without need a dependency with another partner, the partner has leverage, and that can lead to long-term consequences that need a de-risking strategy. We'll pause there for a moment, but stay with us as we'll continue our discussion after the break here on The Agenda. We are all connected across borders, across continents, connected by ideas, a shared humanity. Stay connected. Welcome back to The Agenda. Let's return now to the state of relations between China and Germany in the wake of Chancellor Scholz's visit to Beijing. Still with me are Dr. Ulrich Bruckner, Jean Monnet Professor for European Studies at Stanford University in Berlin, Seven Dardellen, a member of the German Bundestag, and Wang Hui Yao, founder and president of the Center for China and Globalization. Seven, Chancellor Schultz also took with him on this visit um, government ministers from, from the Agricultural Ministry, Environment, Transportation. I wonder what you think um, the message is that sends and, and what was achieved by it? Well, I do believe that uh, the message was uh, that he takes uh, the German-Chinese relations very serious, uh, that uh, it's very worthful uh, for the German Chancellor for the German government uh, under his leadership. And he wanted to follow up actually the policy of Chancellor Merkel towards China. Uh, I think this is the signal uh, what uh, Scholz wanted to show uh, with his delegation, uh, the political and the economical uh, delegation. But as I said, in the end, Chancellor Scholz will have to show whether he has the strength and will to pursue an independent German policy uh, that focuses on expanding German-Chinese relations rather than participating in, for example, military showdowns in the mm. Indo-Pacific region, what the German army is doing. Um, Ulrich, we, we're talking about this, the relationship between Berlin and Beijing, and I wonder what you think the impact of that is um, on the direction of EU policy towards Beijing. Well, this is exactly the next step after what we just heard about the constraints that Olaf Scholz is facing. Yeah. On the one hand, he is just a partner in a coalition of three very different mm -hmm. partners in the German government. And on the other hand, he is just one in a voice of 27 heads of state and government in the European Council. 
with a strategy by the European Commission, which was highlighting much more the risk part of a closer relationship in an EU-Chinese relationship. So it is an important voice what Germany says, but whether there is already something like a coherent position or if Vice Chancellor Habeck, who will travel to China, will send a different signal in June remains to be seen. So both is a cacophonic orchestra, the German level and the European level, and it's too early to tell in what direction we are moving. But at the end of the day, it all depends on the dependency of Europe towards the United States. And that has first and foremost to do with what's happening in Ukraine. Because the longer this war lasts, the more we owe the United States their provision of security. And they will ask us in return to be more engaged in the, in the uh, Indian Pacific region. And that is the last thing China wants to see happening. So that's what Germany and what the EU are, um, are doing in terms of their position towards China. So Hui Gao, I wonder what you think from, 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 the, other, from the other way around. Do you think that, that China approaches Germany in the same way that it does with each individual EU member state? I think absolutely. That's exactly the dilemma I think German public EU has. On the one hand, they, they, they want to uh, reduce a bit the dependency and, and uh, pursue more strategic autonomy, uh, which can help them on the on the on the on the Russian Ukraine war. And uh, but 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 exactly the help is is China. You know, I mean, they depend on the U.S. for security, but then they probably depend more on China uh, on on persuading Russia and maybe even be a partner of the EU to. Uh, stop Russia, but but then they need to be less hostile to China. They need to be really, uh, you know, friendly with China because uh, they are already economic largest economic beneficiary from China, largest trading partner of China. So this this kind of a, a dilemma, then then they have to overcome. They can't just get the benefit of the economic cooperation with China, but then on the other hand, uh, really uh, uh, bashing China, uh, sanction China, and not allowing Chinese company doing business or investing in, in EU or Germany. Uh, but then, at the same time, they want China, demanding China to, to, to stop Russia. So you can't get the a cake and eat it at the same time. So, so I think you, we have to adjust the policy. So, so, so you remember when U.S. wants China to help confirm Soviet Union, we don't know how many times uh, Henry Kissinger made his secret visit to China. Now, uh, I think uh, you know the EU is divided. I think they should really come together, have a pursue a more friendly policy with China. I think, you know, with German and the French uh, uh, leaders taking some good examples, we can have a little more, more uh, neutral, more uh, stable uh, operation with China and, and EU. Ms. Sevin, this was Chancellor Schultz's second visit um, to China, um, but his first since he determined that China was to be a partner, competitor and systemic rival. Um, he said that last year. Um, I wonder how you think all of that has impacted this visit as compared to the previous one? Well, I think uh, this visit uh, was, as I said, the, the most difficult uh, for him after this saying. And uh, I do believe that uh, it would be very desirable for the people in Germany, but all over Europe and in the world as well, to work alongside uh, with China to de-escalate the situation in Ukraine, for example, and also in uh, in the Middle East uh, with Gaza, I think uh, it would be good uh, whenever they talk uh, to China to help uh, creating peace in Ukraine or in the Middle East. I think it would be good for uh, German government to reflect their own policy. How much do they contribute for peace and prosperity in the world? especially in Ukraine and in, 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 uh, in Gaza. And, uh, but at the end, I would really hope that the positive impulses uh, would be incorporated and that there would be a more consistent, uh, as Mr. Brückner said, a consistent approach within the German government in mm -hmm. future, for example, with regard to the one China policy. And it would be also um, uh, be a very important, very right signal of mutual appreciation uh, if the German government would block a veto uh, NATO's planned expansion into Asia uh, against China in the NATO Council. 
So uh, the German government must really understand that the interests of the German people are not matching, are not congruent with the U.S. Interest, uh, interests uh, which seek a confrontation with China. And I hope that Chancellor Scholz at least learned a little bit in his last trip in China that this is the point. We've looked at trade and investment, um, but, but what about those cultural connections too? Um, Ulrich, let me put this to you, because Chancellor Schultz also um, visited some universities um, while he was on his visit to China. Do, do you think that there are going to be maybe more exchanges between students um, in Germany and China? Uh, what would that mean? What, what needs to happen? Why is that important? Well, it is important for a mutual understanding because in these universities, we grow the next political and economic leaders in our societies. I've been working with Fudan University for more than 10 years in an exchange between my alma mater, the Freie Universität, and Fudan. And I just got an invitation from Tong Ji, where Chancellor Scholz gave his talk and interacted with students to relaunch something similar. Because on the one hand, we urgently need to better understand each other. And on the other hand, the German economy is urgently seeking for the best brains in the global economy. This is a competition that is not just a German question, but the rest of the world is looking for smart young people. And China has a lot of smart people to offer. Wang well, Huiyao, where, where do you see German Chinese relations progressing from here? Is it going to start with people? Is it going to be about business, trade and investment? Or is there something broader that we can look to? Well, I think it's all the above because, uh, first of all, business is actually fundamental um, uh, because uh, German, uh, you, you have uh, you know, cultivated in China for almost 40 years. And I mean, it's the largest market, uh, uh, growing middle class. Now they have a 400 million middle class and by next decade, according to Premier Li, going to be 800 million. How can German auto, uh, all, the, all the industry, Basif, Merck, I mean, all those big uh, companies um, abandon that? That's not realistic. I mean, we have the gas uh, 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 lessons, but we cannot uh, uh, falling apart again on this industrial uh, manufacturing capacity. But furthermore, I think Germany and, uh, and China has a long history and had a very good uh, exchange of relations. We, are, we, are, we have no bordering issues. We, uh, we are culturally uh, uh, highly supplementary. And we, you know, it's a great, great two nations uh, in the world and, and the second and the third largest economy in the world. We've got to work together. I mean, if the first and the second economy can't work together, the second and third large economy has to work together. I mean, we already work together. We have so many good success stories. And I think that... Uh, the market for China is, is, is also important for the German and vice versa. So, so let's, let's set aside those uh, ideological and, uh, and those, uh, uh, you know, overemphasized security. Uh, let's, let's starting with the people. China has opened up visas for German to go free and uh, student exchange. There's 50,000 Chinese students in, in Germany. And we hope to have more German tourists uh, and also students. And I'm sure with the next generation have a better views and better assessment well, we could get more normal relation. And I'm sure with China now opened more uh, further, there will be more exchanges. Uh, we, we see so many Germans are visiting China. And I'm sure since believing, after they came and, and watched uh, from the real, uh, they will probably uh, have a different views. And that's going to build up the, the common understanding and the trust. And I hope that uh, the, the bilateral relation will be stabilized and improved mm -hmm. uh, with years ahead. Wang Hui Yao, Stefan Dardellen. And Ulrich Bruckner, thank you all very much. Welcome. Thank you. You can watch every episode of The Agenda in full on CGTN Europe's YouTube channel. And for exclusive extra content from me, my guests and the rest of the team, don't forget to check out At The Agenda Show on TikTok. Coming up on a future agenda, Countdown to Paris 2024, but how will AI affect this year's Olympic Games? But for now, from me, Juliet Mann, and from all the Agenda team here in London, goodbye.